first of all, daily tough night in the office. How do you sum up that game? Um, look, you obviously got to give credit to South. Um, they played their usual quality style of rugby league and they made us pay for a lot of those errors that we made tonight and that's what the good sides do. You just can't give opportunities like that because the good sides will make you pay and yeah, it's very disappointing to have the season unfold like that. And Des, your thoughts on what transpired out there tonight? Yeah, it's probably uh, making everybody back what, what Cherry was saying. Like um, uh, South played very well tonight. Uh, we probably didn't, from a from a manly point of view, we probably didn't uh, uh, do ourselves any favours in that first half. Um, uh, probably we, you know, uh, we afforded them too much field position, and they they capitalised on that. And as, uh, Cherry said they're a, a very good football side at scoring points and then probably the two disallowed tries, we probably needed one of those um, uh, to fall our way um, uh, but uh, uh, that didn't eventuate and I think they were both 12 point turnarounds you know. so um, yeah that kind of uh, uh, hitted us a little bit uh, but um, no, well done to South they were too good. Yeah, we just open up for questions now. Yes, just with that, uh, the Gary disallowed try with the obstruction, were you happy with that ruling? Yes, yeah, I think, uh, you know, when you look at it from, uh, it's been pretty consistent uh, with the uh, uh, the obstruction um, uh, this uh, year, so I, uh, I think there's too much platform or too much uh, uh, issue there with, uh, um, as far as the obstruction call was, yep. Yeah. Does it seem like in the last sort of 10 minutes, the boys sort of switched on? Was it just a matter of a little too late? Um... Oh no! I think uh, uh, you've got to uh, be. You've got to manage these games. Uh, they're, they're, they're big games, uh, big moment games. So, um, and uh, we probably didn't manage it as well as what we should have. Um, certainly, um, uh, with thereabouts, uh, you know. And as I said, like, um, and then once you, you know, you start to, you know, get that imbalance. Uh, you, you know, you start to fatigue a little bit. And, um, yeah, we just afforded. I think South City just got out of their own end and got out of. It. <clears throat> down our end too easily. Yes, can you talk us through the, the start of the game before you got here with all the, the dramas arriving? What happened? Oh, it was just one of those. It was right from the start of the day, really, wasn't it? Yeah, so yeah, it was just one of those things. Yeah, it was just a rough start, but we got through that, yeah. yeah it was just uh, the way it was, the way it worked out. So, uh, But um, it still doesn't account for how we played tonight. Just, did, you, did it sort of shake the players in any way, do you think, just the, the stress at the start of the game? Um, I don't think so, no. I don't think we can use that as, in, as an excuse. Daniel, you've been coached by Wayne in origin, of course. Another grand final for him. It's a remarkable effort. Is he a real weapon for, for South Sydney next week? Yeah, definitely. Like all coaches, you know, um, they're a big part of what unfolds through a season and uh, there's no coincidence the four remaining coaches, you know, are some of the, the strongest in the game. So, you know, Wayne will have his side up for next week, no doubt about that. Des, can you talk about the Sean Kepi incident at the start of the game? Did you think play should have been stopped considering that he was quite unwell? Uh, it's going to be, well, you know, like, it's they're always going to be, uh, there's always going to be one way or the other. Like last week, it was uh, it probably uh, um, uh, uh, cost aside a, a semi final spot, or that's what you know, Pam Rad was saying. Uh, there's certainly uh, um, not being able to play on. And so this week, it's got to be uh, uh, looked at. Um, during the off season, I'd say. So uh, I understand both sides of the argument. Um, it probably, probably there's a fine line. So um, maybe something they might look at because they've got to look at you know play not being disrupted and uh, and, and not being coming at advantageous to the attacking side. Uh, but then also there's a, 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 a right or a duty of care uh, to players. So I think. Um, it would be probably uh, they might look at maybe the orange shirt, the orange shirt only. Who's the uh, uh, the person out there that's trained to to read sort of medical situations might be mic'd or linked back uh, maybe to the doctor or something on the sideline uh, because you know you can leave a player lying there and play on. Who knows what that player is suffering at that time? Yeah, so it's a it's a fine line. So. Um, I doubt, and I dare say, if he had a blown play up and a stop play, then you know there would have been the same gripe. So it's probably at this stage, it's probably something that they've got to explore and look at during the off season. Do you think they were spooked by what happened last week by the referees? Um, I think they were on a hiding to nothing, weren't they? Really? So um, 
Uh, but, you know, as it always turned out, it's, you know, it hadn't had too much impact on the game. Just given the way you started the season, do you look back now satisfied with the campaign or is it a, an opportunity missed? Uh, yeah, probably all that. Yeah, yeah probably all that. Uh, tonight was definitely an opportunity missed, but you need know, hard, hard lessons, hard lessons. What about the, the, the form of Tom Des? I know you haven't like speaking about him too much, but he's had an, an incredible season. Yeah, yeah you know there, there's been some outstanding performances uh, throughout the year, just in, individually and what they've done and, and what they've been able to achieve. You know, highest point scorer. Um, I also believe this man sitting next to me you know, has been had a, 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 an outstanding year as well. Um, you know, sort of been you know uh, finishing in the, in the top ranks of the players and that. So. Yeah, so, so there have been some great personal um, uh, achievements uh, for players uh, this year, so it's, uh, it's comforting. Gives you hope? There's a lot of young guys come through, building the next couple of years? Yeah, no, definitely. There's, uh, uh, it's been a great uh, development platform, that's for sure, uh, and uh, it will harness that going forward. Jerry, your thoughts on just the season Tom had this year? Have you ever seen a player having such an individual year? Um, no, not as a not as a teammate. I've played with some outstanding players, but I guess the quality of his season was, you know, something I haven't really seen before. So um, it's yeah, I'm really proud to be his teammate and watch him work so hard and come back and um, play the way he's played this season. And um, yeah, it's all about backing it up next year for not just Tom but for us as a team. You know, it was a really big step in the right direction. Uh, just before we finish, I think um, I think other coaches have done it uh, uh, beforehand as well. Um, just to take this opportunity to uh, to give uh, um, a bit of Lanny's and, and Andrew and all his staff and the, uh, that work at the NRL and the uh, and the key decisions that they've made around that for the way that they've gone about um, you know, keeping this uh, uh, magnificent game rolling. Um, just the organising around it and the organisation has been then part of it and getting behind it. Um, and also to, you know, to, not, to all the players uh, uh, that have jumped on board with it, um, you know, I think it's been a, a real positive uh, mindset and growth set for the game. And to all the staff, uh, the, the various HPU staffs and, and, and everybody that's worked so hard behind the scenes, not just at our club here really, but all of them, uh, it's been um, uh, from a... Um, a, a a game and an organisation's perspective, it's uh, it's been part to be uh, be part of. So, uh, yeah, thank you to all those uh, that have contributed in that way. Thank you very much. Yes, Cheers. Oh, you got a question from the fans. So, um, DC, your question is: What are you most proud of from your team this season, and how do you see that carrying on to next year? Uh, I'd I'd have to say it's the way we overcome the start. We went zero and four to start the season, and obviously we were written off to be no chance to be. You know, even close to this moment today. So I'm really proud of the group coming together and sticking together um, and just fighting our way through a season. And that's probably just reminded me, Des, and that question, um, I would just want to take the time to thank all of the people back in Sydney that have been cheering us on. Um, we've been getting sent a heap of um, pictures of, you know, I guess fans and members of Manly walking around with their hats and jerseys on and decorating their houses. So um, that's definitely been a big part of our motivation this year is to play for the people back home. So thanks very much for your support. And Des, your question is, as disappointing as tonight is, how pleased would you be to see Turbo win the Dally M or the blokes in next year? Yeah, I think they're sort of right in the picture. Uh, and uh, uh, I think either player uh, would be fitting. And I think uh, uh, I don't think anyone would uh, you know, uh, be too upset if uh, either of those two, those two took the play home, uh, took the, uh, uh, the prestigious ward home. And, yeah, just to back up what uh, Chess said, um, yeah, our fans have got you know, plenty to be proud about and... And we thank them for the way they've stuck by us and, uh, and have uh, rallied around for sure. Thank you. Thank you.